We have two equations that rely on a lever arm and a perpendicular something. For example, torque. Torque depends upon R and the component of the force that is perpendicular to R. The other equation is the angular momentum for a point mass, where all the mass is located at a distance from the rotation axis. That depended upon a lever arm and the perpendicular component of the linear momentum. Any time you need to multiply vectors, our lever arm is a vector. It always points from the rotation axis out to wherever the force is applied. Force is a vector. So basically, we need a way to multiply vectors together to make sure it's only multiplying perpendicular components and coming up with a vector answer. Torque is a vector. Angular momentum is a vector. These equations only give us the magnitudes. You can find the direction using the right hand rule, meaning you let your fingers follow the direction the object's turning, and your thumb is the direction of the vector. So for example, if I had this cart here, That's convenient. It balances quite nicely. But if I tip it just a little bit, it's going to fall. There's a net torque acting on it. What direction is that in? If you use a traditional X, Y, Z axis, specifically what direction is that in? Number one, you got to use your right hand. So those of you who are right-handed, you tend to want to use your left hand. Let your fingers follow the direction it's follow, falling. So this is falling towards that wall, so let your fingers go towards that wall. Your thumb is pointing into the board. That's negative Z direction. So the torque on this is in the negative Z direction, specifically. Its angular momentum would also be in the negative z direction, because that's the way it's rotating. What if it was falling towards you? It's falling towards, well, towards the back wall. Falling towards the back wall, what direction would the torque be in? Positive the backs. Exactly right. So positive and negative isn't enough, unless it's everything's taking place on the same axis. So here, this is positive x. This would be positive z, following that way. Okay. Number one trick to remember to use right hand. That's why it's called right hand. No. When it was following that, falling that way, my thumb was pointing to the right. That would be positive x. So that would be the positive i hat direction. Okay. Yeah, so just a regular traditional coordinate system. That way's x, that way's y, that way's z. I just, I that's that way. Sorry. Using the traditional physics, mathematical, I mean, it changes from class to class. So if this is x, this is y, and that's z, then that's the x direction. That makes sense. Could you make that a rule of saying like counterclockwise motion or clockwise motion if you assign values to that set that you write that? But clockwise in this plane is different than clockwise in this plane. So, you have to be a little careful. Yeah. But you're right, if everything's taking it place in one plane, you can certainly call clockwise one and counterclockwise that. The other does like Okay. Technically, these equations written in vector form are... Torque, the 
torque vector specifically is equal to the lever arm vector R crossed with the force vector F. The angular momentum vector, please keep in mind this angular momentum equation is only for a point mass. So that means all the mass is located pretty much the same distance away from the rotation axis. But it will be R cross P. This is called the cross product. Another term used for it is the vector product. Cross product multiplies only perpendicular components together. Multiplies x's with y's, x's with c's. It, you get zero if you multiply x components together. Okay. It's also called a vector product because the answer you get is a vector. It has i, j's, and k's. It gives you the components specifically. Now there's two ways to go about this. One of them is to memorize what I cross I is, what I cross J is, what I cross K is, what J cross J is, what J cross I is, what J cross K is, and all the options. That's one way to do it. Which really isn't too hard if you understand the right hand rule. The cross product Using your right hand, if you put your index finger in the direction of this first vector in the cross product and make it so the second vector points out of your palm, then your thumb will be the result. So for example, our rod, force of gravity is downwards, the lever arm points from the rotation axis out to where the force is applied. So if you put your index finger in the direction of R, it has to be your right hand. <laughs> but then you need to turn your wrist until this second, the force vector, points out of your palm. I can't change this. This still needs to point to the right. So I need to turn my wrist until the force vector is pointing out of my palm. My thumb is the result. Okay. Or it's positive. It'd be negative Z. Yeah. So that's Z as we're fixing. Yes. Yeah, if to the right is positive X and up is positive Y, then out of the board has to be positive Z. And that's because it's a right handed coordinate system. This way is positive. Basically, what that means is I cross J is positive K. I cross with J, I need to turn my wrist all the way around so that J can point out of my palm, is positive K. Our traditional Cartesian coordinate system is a right-handed coordinate system. That's what we call it. And it's because the right-hand rule works. There are left-handed coordinate systems where the left-hand rule works, where you do the same thing. It's just backwards from the right-hand coordinate system. Okay. The other way to do the cross product, if you don't want to mess with the right-hand rule and all that good stuff. Is that the making the matrix? Yes. We set up a matrix. So let's say we have a lever arm vector. For now, I'm going to make it three-dimensional. So it has some x component, some y component, and some z component. Any of those could be zero. Our force will have some x component, some y component, and some z component. If any of the components are zero, you just put zero in for that component. <laughs> to do the cross product, we set up a matrix. In the top row, you put the unit vectors, i, j, and k. In the second row, you put the first vector in the cross product. So the second row always has to be r. If you mix up the r and the f, if you interchange them, you get the opposite answer. So in, uh, order is important. 
So you put the R, just the components in. So under the I hat, you put the X component of R. Under the J hat, you put the Y component of R. Under the K hat, you put the Z component of R. In the last row, you put in the components of the force. So the X component goes under I hat. The Y component goes under J hat. The Z component goes under K hat. And then what we're going to do is call taking the determinant of the matrix. There's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to show you one way. If you know another way and you like another way, use it. That's fine. To take the determinant of the matrix, number one, to get the X component, the I hat value, you need to cross out the row and the column that have I hat in it. So you cross out the top row and the left column because those both have the I hat in it. That leaves you with four values left. You always start with the top left hand value and you multiply it by its diagonal. So you take Y times the Z component of the force and then you subtract the other diagonals multiplied together. So FY times Z. Uh -huh. Did you move from Y to Z and do it that way, or do you have to have it the way you just formatted it? You have to have it the way you formatted it. I'm saying like you wrote Y times the force of the Z component. Yes, that has to be that way. But then minus, they're opposite of each other, right? It's well, always the first see. diagonal minus the second diagonal, yes. Well, could your second diagonal be written as Z times F Y? Sure, it doesn't matter what order you have multiply numbers in. Just as long as you're multiplying those diagonal values. Mm -hmm. Now here's the tricky part. The J component is always negative. It's always opposite. That's matrix rule, matrice rules. They're even odd positions within the matrice. So J hat, when we do the J hat term, you always put a minus sign in front of it. But you do the same thing. You cross out the row and the column that have J in it and start with the top left hand corner and multiply the diagonals. So X times FC and subtract the other diagonals multiplied together. The K hat's back to positive. To find the K hat term, same thing, you cross out the row and the column that have K in it. Start with the top left hand number, multiply it by its diagonal, and subtract the other diagonals multiplied together. Once you've done the, do the cross product, you have a vector answer. I have this term is the X component of the torque. This term is the Y component of the torque. This term is the Z component of the torque. So you get a vector answer, it will tell you the direction the torque is in. What does it mean, by the way, to have, if these torque values were not zero, what would it mean to have an X and a Y and a Z component of the torque? If your torque's only in the X direction, your object rotates this way around the x-direction, the x-axis. If your torque is only in the y-direction, then your object rotates this way around the y-axis. So what would it mean to have all three components? x, y, z. So we're going to have a vector off at some angle. Just put your thumb in the direction of the vector. It just means your object's rotating around an axis that points off at an angle. That's all it means. Okay.